Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, we are going to take a look at some other interesting operant phenomenon uh, today, and we're going to look at punishment and how that differs from reinforcement. So make sure you have your notes out, and don't uh, forget to pause and rewind if you need to. Our goals after this video would be to be able to describe other operant conditioning phenomenon other than reinforcement and to be able to describe how punishment differs from reinforcement. So let's get started. Uh, other reinforcement principles that we're going to take a look at today are the PREMEC principle. This is sometimes known as grandmother's principle, and it's really what every babysitter should know. So if you ever watch uh, younger kids, you might be able to use this to your advantage. Basically, the PREMEC principle says that any high-rate behavioral response or a behavior that occurs a lot, and it's preferable, can be used to reinforce a low-rate behavioral response. Uh, this is a behavior that is not enjoyable or that doesn't occur very often. And how this works is, let's say you uh, have a younger kid you're babysitting that loves video gaming. This would be considered a high-rate behavior because they enjoy doing it, and you can observe them doing it often. Cleaning your room might be considered a low-rate behavior for most people. It's something that we don't observe young kids doing very often, uh, or they don't enjoy doing it. So if we withhold the high-rate behavior until the low-rate behavior is complete, therefore the high-rate behavior actually becomes the positive reinforcer for actually accomplishing the low-rate behavior. So in this case, if the kid, uh, the young child wants to play video games, um, you say, sure you can, after you clean your room. So we, if we observe the kid clean their room, then when they're finished, we can allow them to play video games, which becomes the reinforcer. So hopefully we might see the low rate behavior increase in frequency if it is followed by the high rate behavioral option. And so there we have our little kid. Hopefully he doesn't have a little uh, goatee uh, playing his video games after he does his vacuuming. Another interesting phenomenon that uh, we're, um, or we can connect to operant conditioning is a, a term called overjustification. Overjustification occurs when we try to reinforce an already reinforcing activity. So if we're doing something that's already uh, intrinsically reinforcing, that we, we get the satisfaction from doing it, we enjoy doing that behavior, and then somebody comes along and uh, gives us an, an extrinsic reinforcer or a secondary reinforcer, that might be doubly nice, right? But uh, the problem is the original intrinsic reinforcer may eventually lose its reinforcing capability because we're working for that extrinsic reinforcer, maybe money or awards. Now, there was a study done in which kindergartners who like to finger paint, at least I used to like to finger paint, um, one group of, of kids was told that they're going to be getting awards for finger painting. So a chart was set up in the room, and, and they get gold stars. Now, the gold stars were given randomly to kids. Some days they get more, some days they get less. But in a uh, control situation, another group of kindergartners, they just get to finger paint on the regular finger painting day. Well, after about three or four weeks, uh, the kids got prizes for their gold stars, and they're all really happy. We had a finger painting party, but the next week when uh, it was time to finger paint, and they said, well, where's our chart? Where are we going to get stars? And they were told, well, we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to get gold stars. We're just going to finger paint. Many of the kids said, well, why should we finger paint then if we're not going to get prizes? Why should we do what we enjoy if we're not getting more for it? So the finger painting kind of lost its intrinsic value because they were working for that extrinsic reinforcer, which might beg the question then, should we advocate paying students for studying or getting good grades? Uh, and if we talked about intrinsic versus extrinsic reinforcement or primary versus secondary reinforcement, we might find that it would be um, due to over justification, not a good idea uh, because students 
at least when they're younger, learn because it's enjoyable. And once we start getting grades, which might also be considered a, an overjustification reward, people start to study, well, what am I going to, what kind of points am I going to get for this? What kind of grade am I going to get for this instead of the enjoyment for learning? So overjustification is a subtle effect, but it certainly can have a big impact. Um, I have some friends who tried to make businesses out of things they enjoy doing, and they some were successful, but many of them also lost their pure enjoyment for actually doing the activity because it became a job and they're doing it for money. We're going to take a look at punishment now. Um, punishment, as you might guess, is kind of the mere opposite of reinforcement. Punishment actually occurs when a behavior leads to a decrease in the response rate of that behavior. And it's typically not something somebody does to somebody. It's typically something that has, is being done to them, um, at least in nature. So positive punishment, just like positive reinforcement, um, positive means arrival of and punishment means decrease in behavior. So positive punishment occurs when the frequency of a behavior decreases due to the arrival of the unpleasant stimulus or consequence. So there's an arrival of something unpleasant and then that leads to a decrease in the behavioral response. There's actually a negative punishment as well, just like there's a negative reinforcement. And the negative in this case is the same. The behavior leads to something removed. But in order to get an unpleasant outcome or uh, a response that weakens in frequency, negative punishment occurs when the frequency of a behavior decreases due to the removal of a pleasant stimulus. So a timeout might be an example of this, where you're, you know, you hit your sister when you're watching your favorite TV movie, and then your parents send you to your room so you can't watch the movie. So when a behavior leads to the removal or subtraction of something pleasant, that leads to a decrease in the frequency of the behavior that it follows. Some examples of positive punishment might be uh, you put hot food in your mouth without blowing on it and you burn your mouth. So it's the arrival of an unpleasant stimulus, your mouth hurts. It might be speeding and receiving a ticket. So you're exceeding the speed limit and that leads to the arrival of an unpleasant stimulus, which is the ticket. Um, or running upstairs too fast and not paying attention, just tripping. So you, you're embarrassed or you hurt your knee. So all those behaviors led to the arrival of something that wasn't there before and that variable is unpleasant. Negative punishment, uh, some examples might be you're back sassing to your parents and then you get sent to your room. So um, you lose the freedom uh, to do what you wanted to do, maybe go out with your friends or play video games. Getting a bad grade and then losing eligibility for a sport. So the behavior of getting a bad grade and not studying leads to the removal or losing of something that you enjoy, which is the ability to play that sport or driving drunk and then losing your driver's license. Those might be examples of negative punishment. Now these are certainly something that people can do to others to reduce bad behaviors, but they typically occur in nature, at least positive punishment does. It's just our environment's telling us we screwed up and did something wrong, so we have an unpleasant outcome. Now, this is a good slide to rewind to. This is a universal operant sentence, uh, and you can fill in any of the um, yellow spots or choose them and, and create a, uh, an operant sentence. So the behavior of um, sticking hot food in your mouth is likely to be uh, positively punished due to the arrival, because it's positive, uh, of an unpleasant stimulus. The behavior is likely to be weakened. A reinforcement statement might be uh, the behavior of eating chocolate ice cream is likely to be positively reinforced due to the arrival of a pleasant stimulus, which is taste. The behavior is likely to be strengthened. So this is kind of a sentence I use to help students remember what type of reinforcement they're getting. And a couple things about punishment. Uh, remember, punishment and reinforcement always works. And if they don't work, then they're not punishment or reinforcement. Um, and remember, the, if, the <coughs> excuse me, if the behavior doesn't increase or decrease, then the consequence wasn't a reinforcer or punisher. Now, there are a few problems here with punishment. 
um, at least to shape behavior, to make behavior decrease in frequency. And one of them is punishment often leads to aggressive and disruptive behavior. So if you punish a student for doing something in class, they might get aggressive and verbally aggressive towards you as a teacher. Punishment doesn't inform what the subject is supposed to do, so it doesn't increase appropriate behaviors. It might decrease undesirable behaviors, but it's not going to increase desirable behaviors. It's certainly negative reinforcing for a person who's using it because sometimes it works, and if you punish somebody and it works, your behavior is reinforced, so you're likely to become somebody who punishes more often. And it often leads to other undesirable behavior. So if you ask a kid who broke the lamp and they tell you the truth, and then you send them to their room, a child might learn to lie in order to avoid the punishment. So they might develop unnecessary or undesirable negatively reinforced behavior response. So uh, that's the end of our slideshow. Uh, please be kind and rewind. Uh, if you have to, go back and check out our objectives. And uh, I hope these answered some questions for you. Thanks a lot, and we'll be seeing you soon.